friction folder. Friction folder. Friction folder. So the number one comment that I got back when I had asked you guys what kind of knives you'd like to see me build, uh, friction folder was like the most popular. Now the only bummer with a friction folder is that I've never ever made one. I've never made any type of folding knife in my life. Uh, what I'm going to do over the next couple days is I'm going to try and build a friction folder. Uh, we'll start off with the design, then we'll kind of look at the parts I have available to me and kind of make it up as we go. I've never even watched videos on making friction folders before, except I did watch a Forged in Fire where they had to make one, so, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm good to go. Anyways, guys, these next couple days, that's what we're going to be doing, that's what we're going to be making. Uh, I'm going to... I'm gonna be filming little segments of this as well as uh, doing the other orders that I have to get out. I know a lot of you guys might be used to seeing more like full builds, like an entire build in a day. Now I had an interesting comment from a gentleman saying that, you know what, he really doesn't like these multi-part videos. And honestly, the biggest reason for that is that well, you can thank YouTube. See, YouTube favors channels that create content every single day. When this video comes out, this will be my 53rd consecutive day of publishing a video on YouTube. Now, if I could just make one or two videos a week and kind of film them for two or three days, edit them, and release them as a single video, and if that would get just as much attention as all these other videos come out every single day, then absolutely I would do that. It's not like this is the easiest way. I mean, literally, I work in my shop all day long and then I edit early, early in the morning. Uh, so like this, what I'm, what I'm shooting today, I will be editing at 4.30 tomorrow morning. The reason is that YouTube legitimately really favors channels that create content every single day day. After 53 days, I'm noticing a very significant difference in my views, in uh, the, the, the way that my videos recommended, all this stuff, and that's just the way that the YouTube algorithm is set up. So my thoughts are for this video, let me know what you think. If I take all the footage, if I take all the footage that I've shot for the next several days, like we're going to vlog this entire build, but if I take all that footage and kind of compile it into one single build video, possibly do a voiceover or something like that, you know, a 15 to 20 minute build video, I could release that one on the weekends. At the same time, I don't want to just kind of regurgitate content that I've created and put it out again. But if it would be appreciated to have a single source video for building this thing, then that might be an option as well. Let me know what your thoughts are below. A lot of you guys have asked how the push-up challenge is going. 100 push-ups a day? Well, I'm still doing them. So that's a good thing. So as it is with any build, uh, the very first step, we're going to take some paper and uh, we're going to sketch up a design. I think for the blade, I'm just going to be using 01 tool steel because I have so much of that kicking around. Probably some type of a G10 for the scales. Again, this is my very first one, so I'm not expecting that much. I just want to see how difficult it is. I might do it and be like, you know what, this is actually quite simple. Why didn't I do this sooner? Or I might be like, you know what, uh, this is going to take quite a few iterations before we get something really, really good. But Either way, we have to start somewhere. So I decided to draw a slightly larger version of what we had just done there. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna start hacking on actual steel. Drawing by hand and trying to get it accurately laid out, like when I did the other one, the problem was I just didn't put the pin in the correct spot. So my thoughts are this, if I 
cut this out roughly, and then if I mark out very accurately that hole location, drill that hole, from there I can set this on a piece of G10, uh, put a pivot in there, and kind of start working on the stop pins from that point. I think that's gonna be the best way to go because trying to monkey around with paper, uh, it's kind of disheartening because I think it's all wrong, but I don't think it is actually wrong. I just, I think that we just need to, I think the easiest way is just to do this on steel. So we've got the rough profiling done. Obviously I'll spend a little more time cleaning that up before I go grind it. I wanted to leave this surface and this surface factory because it's a precision ground piece of steel. What I'm gonna do now is mark a line exactly halfway. I'm just gonna scribe line right here. We've got our line scribed right in the middle there. And now, now we need to put a line right here. For that, we're just gonna use a, uh, for that, we'll just use a machinist square. Oh, this is the tricky part. Where exactly do we want this to be? Actually, you know what? We had a measurement. We were going three inches. Let's go three inches. No, I think that was about where I was gonna put it in the first place. What I like to do is actually stick the scribe in the line. That way it's exactly where you want it to be. We'll bring this out here. We're just gonna scratch that right like that. And actually for this one, we're going all the way across. The reason for that is that this is also where I'm gonna wanna drill the holes for my two stops. I don't know, I might be totally wrong, but. Oops, that's not perfect. That's looking a lot better. We can just move it a little bit more like that. I've got a nice hole right smack dab in the middle. One thing a lot of people don't know is that when you're using your punches, uh, the reason I use these small spring-loaded punches first is because, well, first they don't leave a huge hole, but you can actually move your hole around. So if your first one's a little bit off, you can actually just kind of point this in the direction that you want it to move, hit it again, and it'll actually move that hole over for you. Once I'm there, I'll make sure that I have this seated to the far edge that we were traveling the direction, and then I'll put this in here and then pop it one really good. That way we can get our hole perfectly centered. Now that we have that done, what I'm going to do is take a little Prussian blue, spray it on there again, some layout dye, and then I'm going to use this like a compass in here and kind of uh, scratch a radius. You know, it's so funny when you haven't done anything like this before because every step I, I'm doing it the way that I assume it should be, but then every step I'm like, unless that's wrong, <laughs> it's kind of... It's funny when you don't really know the outcome, you're like, oh yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And then I look at them like, oh, I hope that's the way you do it. I guess we'll just wait and see, but uh, please don't take anything that I'm doing in this video or any continuation of this build as the way to do it until you see the end product and see if that actually works. <music> This radius is a quarter inch, 0 0.250. And what I would like to do is now I need to figure out where the pins, the stop pins are gonna go. What I'm using for stop pins is this, I believe this is actually 01 tool steel. Uh, this is one eighth of an inch exactly, beautiful. And so we need to basically mark out where the center of these holes should be. So we'll go like this, we'll go 0.125. We're gonna divide that by two because we wanna know the center is 0 0.0625 and we're gonna add plus 0.250 at a quarter inch, so we get 0.3125. So let's set this sucker to 0.3125. That 0.25, 0.31, that 0.25, that's two and a half thousandths of an inch. That's probably about the thickness of a human hair. So uh, we're really, really getting persnickety here. And I'm not gonna do a whole radius because I don't need that. I just need that one mark. Uh, this is gonna give us the cross point for our pins to go through. Oops, I, I better get this. All right, I think now, now would probably be a good time to talk about what I'm gonna use for a pivot. Such a mess going on here. Ay -ay -ay. 
Oh, there it is. All right, so this, I believe this is actually a pivot screw. And I picked this up from knifekits.com, and I know I've talked about them a lot lately. Um, it's just where I get all my fasteners for Kydex and stuff. You can see it's got kind of a nice little detail on this side. Then it's also got these serrations so that it's gonna stay in place. So what I'll do is I'll drill this through from the outside and press it in, and it's kind of got those little, I don't know, almost like knurling, but it's a little different. So I should be able to just press this in and it will stay inside of the scale of the handle. And then this will be my pivot. And then this will screw in from the other side. But I think they're going to work good for this pivot. I was thinking about doing all this in my milling machine. But my milling machine really, really, really sucks. And I honestly don't know if it would do well with this. Maybe it would. Maybe I should try it. I, I don't know. <laughs> So we've drilled our holes and I've cut down the pins. And so what I'm gonna do now, this is just a piece of red G10 quarter inch that I had laying around. What I'm gonna do is cut this in half and then I think before I go any further, I'm actually gonna use this and transfer all these holes to the G10. <laughs> was thinking I needed two holes, two pin holes. Obviously that would hold the blade captive so it couldn't move. So that was a little bit ridiculous on my part. The only one I do need is this one. There's a little play in it. Like that is way, way too sloppy. Entirely unacceptable. So like if it were closed and properly lined up. So that's nice, right? We've got our line there, but when we open it, basically we'll be hitting on this hole and that will be holding it, that will be the stop for open, it is way out. And that's going to look ridiculous. I want this to open and sit like this when it's done, because I want this to be a nice straight line. So I'll cut out a new blank, and then we'll drill this hole a little bit smaller, and then these two holes, this line that I scribed them on, I'm actually going to scoot this down just a touch, and then I can come here with a little needle file and kind of finesse that. So I would rather, when you go to open it and it hits that pin, it's like this, that way I can just bring it back to where I need it to be. And same thing when it closes, because I'd like it to close right like that. So that is going to be the next step. Learning process. Yeah, you know what, I guess that's what happens when you're doing something for the very first time. And you know what, I'm, I'm kind of excited about this because I have a much better understanding of what's involved now than when I started this morning. Uh, every little tiny failure is a wonderful experience if you look at it that way. In an ideal world, and maybe, maybe if this hole wasn't quite so big, if it wasn't too big, maybe this would work. But you know what, hey, tomorrow, Tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to grind a new blank like this. I'm going to redo this hole, make it more precise, and then redo these two holes. And it will kind of be like right where we left off today. The first time I ever do this. Oh, that, that's kind of fun. That's, that's kind of exciting. Uh, this is good times. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, hopefully you can kind of learn some of this stuff as we're going through it so that when you decide you want to make a friction folder, if you've never made one before, uh, maybe there's some tips and tricks you could pick up. If you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm trying to upload daily every single day. Uh, most of them, a lot of them are knife build vlogs like this. Uh, you can click this button right here to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you don't miss anything. And also, if you're new, you may not have seen a couple of these videos right here. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.